James Carafano is here from the Heritage Foundation, historian, professor, author, wise scholar. James, how are you, sir? Hey, great to be with you. I'm grateful you're here. Uh, first of all, am I right in describing this as a hostage situation? Yeah, we just we just don't know how big a hostage situation is. I mean, I don't think anybody, not even the Taliban, know how many Americans, allies, and Afghan friends will be trapped in the country after this thing shuts down. Uh, you know, this has been very surreal for me. I mean, you know, I've been I deal with crises all the time, but this one's actually become personal because. There are literally thousands of people all over the country, all over the world, that are working to, to get people out. I, I just, just got off the phone with somebody, and it's very, very clear there are Americans right now that can't get to the airport or can, can't get in the airport, uh, and others as well. So it's going to be a hostage crisis compared to the Iran hostage crisis. I mean, the Iran hostage crisis is going to look like a, a sinking rowboat compared to the Titanic. I mean, the numbers, whatever they are, are going to be big. And what's going to happen on September 1st? So we talked a little bit earlier about the rhetoric, and Biden's going to say, oh, we got everyone out who wanted to come home, right? Uh, that's how they're going to try to spin this out of it. Even though, as you said, right. people just, they just can't get inside the airport. But what are they going to, what's the Taliban going to do on September 1st? Well, first of all, it's very likely that, that the U.S. is going to be gone. I, I think this is going to be very impossible for the United States. So we're gone. You know, the narrative that, that this was like successful, like the Berlin airlift is, is ridiculous. The dude just lost a country. He's condemned an entire nation full of women to slavery. There's a generation of children that have never known the Taliban that are going to be under this oppressive rule. So to, to claim that this sub is some kind of victory, it's like the captain of the Titanic saying, well, we got everybody in the lifeboats. As far as I'm concerned, it was an incredibly successful mm -hmm. cruise. So it's going to be a disaster. What the Taliban are going to do is they are going to continue to solidify their co control over the country. So there, this is going to go back to being the old country under the old Taliban. Literally, life is going to go back to the Middle Ages. The only difference between the new Taliban and the old Taliban is the new Taliban are actually wicked good at social media. They're very good at engaging in the Western press. And... They know how to work the external world, and they're going to do that way better. But the purpose of all that is to do one thing, which is to solidify their control over the people inside the country and run it like a medieval kingdom. And what is? And they have all of our weapons too, which they didn't have 20 years ago. What um, What are they going to do with the Americans? So, so I, I imagine so. Saw this report the other day of a Washington Post reporter. She's like a 35 year old woman, right? And she was able to get out because the British clear some streets and she was able to hitch on that bandwagon and get to the airport. That's the only reason she's alive now is because of the British troops. Right. So let's say that didn't happen. She's stuck in some house in Afghanistan. What are the Taliban going to do to her on September 1st? And people like well, her, the thousands of people like her. This is the crazy thing. They're going to do whatever they want. They might hold people for ransom. They might claim they're CIA agents and put them on trial and execute them. They might hold a bunch of them in prison and go to the Americans and say, don't be supporting the rebels. Don't be stopping our drug trafficking. Don't be blocking our bid to join the, the Human Rights Council at the United Nations. Because if you do, all these people mm -hmm. are going to die. And remember what happened to Jimmy Carter and the, and the Iran embassy. They're going to hold uh, Biden hostage for three years. And either they will take his presidency down or they won't care about his presidency and they'll just humiliate the United States. That's worse than them having our night vision goggles, right? We talked about that the other day, technological and uh, technological technology and everything else they have. But the fact that they're going to have all these, I just thought they'd shoot him in the head and that's bad enough. Right. Uh, maybe it's, maybe giant, it's even worse to keep him as slaves. And, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's even worse. Wow. On the, on, and the, uh, just to drive that point home, that's on Biden. Fair. Look, it's it. Look, it's a giant human shield. All the catastrophe that's happened here is because of Biden, and and here's where where they're wrong. They think this is just a bad press day, and once they yep. get past the thirty first, this is all going to further away. But there's a whole series of cascading problems that they've unleashed, and they're going to plague them throughout their presidency. Look, first of all. Afghanistan is going to be a black hole to the United States. 
We have no place to base out of. We're going we're to have worse relations with the Pakistanis. They're not going to let us do anything. We, the stands are not going to let us in because they're not going to annoy the Taliban. We are going to have less visibility in Afghanistan than we did under Clinton. So horrible things are going to happen there, and we're not going to know about them until they come out of there and smack us in the face. So, you know, you talk about the dog that caught the car. I mean, <laughs> oh, Biden has yeah. unleashed a problem that he has no control over until the end of his presidential term. Does he know it, or is he that delusional? And or, or, Does he know, or does he care? Uh, you know, I think he does care, and, and that's the great tragedy here, is I think this started with, with Biden frightened himself out of Afghanistan. He convinced himself that this was all going to collapse. And his brilliant plan for this was, we're going to have no plan. We're going to run away in the middle of the night. Because we are gifting the country to the Taliban, the Taliban are going to let us make a graceful exit. And then after we're gone, it's all going to collapse. And we'll say, not our problem. Didn't happen on our watch. Not our fault. And they just live with it like they live with Iran, like they live with Libya, like they live with That was the plan. Um, but that's not what happened. One, the Taliban humiliated them going out the door. And two is, is their calculation was Americans wouldn't care about this, but Americans don't like to be lied to. They don't like to be humiliated and they don't want to have to worry about the next 9-11. And now they have to worry about all those things. So out of fear yeah. of embarrassing his administration, he created a situation that humiliated his administration. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.